believe this is going to be uh, a great help to me. Uh, one night uh, this week, or one morning, about 3 o'clock in the morning, I uh, had an experience. I uh, woke up almost uh, shouting in the bed. And uh, I remember uh, when my dad was, I believe it was the third stage of Alzheimer's, and he had got to the place, he'd go through periods when he'd be almost blind, couldn't speak, uh, couldn't, uh, maybe for a while couldn't move his arms, another time couldn't move his legs. And uh, the Lord healed him, and he came and preached at the church I was pastoring, and uh, pretty well threw his uh, foot when he slung his leg uh, over the top of the pulpit and said, I couldn't even move my leg. Uh, well, my sickness was not anything like that, but I guess somehow in the spirit I identified with that. Uh, and there in the bed, I said, oh, hallelujah, I couldn't even move my leg. <laughs> uh, so thank God uh, we feel uh, real good this morning. Thank the Lord for the good people at uh, Southside. And, of course, the devil's here. Uh, he's always uh, listening. Uh, but I've been there, I believe, is this going on five years? And uh, never pastored a church, uh, uh, you know, without uh, some problems. Uh, but we, uh, seemingly, we just haven't had problems at Southside. So it's good people to work with. And in my travels, it's always good to know that uh, we have qualified leadership uh, to go ahead uh, with everything uh, when we're not there. Uh, uh, thank the Lord we can uh, report uh, some good things uh, since the last uh, district convention. Uh, we are 100% uh, in emergency fund. Uh, still working on CPMA. Uh, thank the Lord uh, uh, we now have uh, second bathroom completed uh, with hot water. Amen. 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 And uh, uh, we have some things on our list we hope to do real soon. Uh, we want to get a nice sign uh, put out front, get our ditch uh, covered over. It's amazing to me uh, that I've never heard of anybody driving in that ditch uh, right there at our parking lot. And uh, had a good tent revival with Sister Mary Shelton. And uh, we had uh, 15 first comers uh, from the neighborhood. And uh, we're trying to follow up on that and uh, work with that. Uh, sometimes it seems like the increase is sort of like Noah's Ark. Uh, they came in by twos. And uh, sometimes, uh, you know, if we can take uh, three steps forward and uh, two steps back, I that's not as much progress as we'd like to see, uh, but we have seen slow, uh, steady growth at Southside, and uh, we thank God uh, for that, and again, we appreciate uh, our uh, good people. All right, I want to uh, share with you from uh, the scripture, and uh, we probably won't go to uh, to 235 because we got up here a little early. But I appreciate the theme of our convention. Amen. Amen. Uh, concerning the Church of God uh, and its uh, expected uh, end. And uh, I believe the uh, 45th Psalm, I'm just going to read a, a short phrase uh, from there, but let's, let's begin there. Uh, I believe the 45th Psalm uh, describes that wedding that is going to take place. Uh, I believe it is a messianic song. And in describing uh, the wedding of Christ and the church, uh, actually says more about uh, the bridegroom. The focus is more on him uh, than upon the bride. And I challenge you to read that whole chapter uh, in light of what I, I've just said. But uh, in verse 9, the last part of, of verse 9, Upon thy right hand did stand the queen. Upon my right hand did stand the queen. And I believe that is a reference uh, to uh, the bride of Christ uh, that's going to rule and reign with Christ uh, and be at his 
uh, right hand. Can you say amen? amen. Now, that may seem like a, a strange uh, text for my topic here today, uh, but we'll try to uh, tie up all the loose ends uh, toward the end of this. The thinking of the bride uh, is being at uh, the right hand. Uh, the Lord Im impressed upon me to share with you uh, on the subject of compassion. Can everyone say compassion? Compassion. 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 Now you may say, what does that have to do with uh, the queen being at the right hand? Well, uh, we'll get there. But as we study compassion in the scripture, uh, I'd like for us uh, to notice uh, uh, three uh, concepts that keep repeatedly coming up. And uh, I, if you want to use fancy words, I have labeled these uh, as solidarity, uh, sensitivity, and servility. But <coughs> compassion uh, begins uh, with a solidarity or a presence, uh, making contact. And sensitivity has to do with our most inner our deepest, innermost feelings. And then servility has to do with action and doing something about it. And it seems to me in the New Testament uh, that wherever uh, you find the word compassion, uh, that you see these three things uh, in that order at work. Uh, thank God that he had compassion upon us. And he sent his son, the Lord Jesus Christ, uh, to come down and be God with us. Amen. He became like us so we could become like him. Amen. He became one with humanity, his presence among us. And as he did and experienced the sufferings that are common to man Amen. and saw what was going on in the sin-cursed world, even through the eyes of a man and experiencing it, uh, this was the driving passion uh, behind his, uh, his ministry uh, to drive him to uh, serve uh, and to help people. Uh, the book of Hebrews says it well in Hebrews chapter 2, verse 17 and 18. Wherefore in all things it behooved him to be made like unto his brethren, that he might be a merciful and faithful high priest in things pertaining to God, to make reconciliation for the sins of the people, for in that he himself hath suffered. I, I believe our district overseer mentioned some things, and he asked uh, how many uh, have, have done that. Well, uh, whatever sufferings we experience, the Lord Jesus Christ, he can say, uh, been, uh, been, been there and done that. Amen. Amen. Uh, for in that he himself has suffered being tempted, he is able to secure them uh, that are tempted. Right. Hebrews 4 and 15, For we have not a high priest which cannot be touched with the feelings of our infirmities, but was in all points tempted like as we are, yet without sin. He became one of us. He felt the pain of whatever suffering uh, that uh, we experience man born of woman is of a few days uh, and full uh, of trouble. Uh, but as he uh, felt this pain and saw others in this pain, uh, his mission was to do something about that, to bring about a healing. Amen. Yes. Thank God for physical healing. Thank God for spiritual healing. Yes. But all kinds of healings, healings of broken relationships. Yes. Uh, healings of, uh, of finances, uh, all the curse upon this earth that's been brought on because uh, of sin. Uh, Jesus, by becoming one of us, uh, yes, there is a sense, uh, is God, uh, that he knew all things. We don't know all things, but uh, we know some things. But there's different kinds of knowledge. There's an intellectual knowledge. There's a head knowledge. But there is a, 
and experiential knowledge. Amen? Amen. And well, before he left heaven, there, there were aspects of, of that experiential knowledge that he uh, did not have. Now, when it comes to, certainly to his omniscience, he, he knew all things. But uh, he had not experienced what it meant to be a man. He had not experienced what it meant to suffer. And he could not experience that except as he came down and lived among us. He made contact. He came to where we were. Hallelujah. Julius Caesar in his military campaigns. One time he referred to his victories with these words. A vini, vidi, vici. Now that's Latin. For I came, I saw, and I conquered. And that is parallel to uh, the three main points here uh, of presence and uh, feeling is associated with seeing and then uh, and then action. And uh, uh, we see uh, these forces at work in the life uh, of Christ. The shortest verse in the, in the Bible, John 11 and 35, said uh, uh, Jesus wept. But you see, before he wept, he went. He came. Jesus went. Jesus wept, and then uh, 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 Jesus' little play on words, I don't know if this be a southern pronunci pronunciation or what, but Jesus uh, went, wept, and worked. Amen? Amen. And uh, over and over we, we see this, uh, this uh, order. Here where it says Jesus wept, we read in John chapter 11, verse 17, then when Jesus came, Verse 33, he saw her, that would be Mary, weeping. Uh, her brother was dead. Uh, uh, he uh, so said, when Jesus came. Bless him, Lord. Amen. Amen. There's got to be some going. There's got to be some contact. When Jesus came, he saw. We've got to have a vision of uh, the needs of people. He saw her weeping. And the Jews also, which came with her, he groaned in the spirit and was troubled. Bless him, Lord. Let me tell you, unless he would have first came, and as a result of his coming, what he saw as the Son of Man, uh, he could not have wept himself as he saw Mary uh, weep. He could not have grown in the spirit and be, be troubled. And so in verse 35, we find that verse, Jesus wept. Verse 38, Jesus therefore again groaning in himself, cometh to the grave. Verse 43, and he cried with a loud voice, Lazarus, come forth. He went to where the people were. He was criticized. They said, this man receiveth sinners and eateth with them. But by going where they were, he identified with their experiences and what they were suffering. He came across those who were hurting, got right in the midst of them and ministered to their need. To every kind of need that they had. Well, not but thank God first and foremost salvation. Yes, now, I'm not trying to be controversial here, but I'm going to say something. For years, I heard people say the mission of the church is not charity, but rather reaching the lost. I beg your pardon. Amen. Amen. People don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. Amen. 
Yes. A.J. Tomlinson. He was ministering to people before 1903. That's right. Those poor mountain folks, children starving to death, orphans. I believe by ministering to them before 1903 that it endured him to the hearts of those people to where he was more readily accepted after God gave him a divine revelation of the church of God. Amen. Amen. Jesus ministered unto all kinds of, of, of needs. We read of him weeping again in Luke chapter 19, verse 41. Now, the context of this is Palm Sunday. He's entering into Jerusalem. Therefore, the last oh, a week of his life uh, before uh, his death, and it says, and when he was come near. Amen. That's my first point. Amen. And when he was come near, he beheld the city. That's my second point. Amen. Amen. Uh, and that beholding and seeing continually but of so many instances uh, tied in with the weeping and the feeling. Yeah, but was there any action? Oh, yes, there was. Yes. Hallelujah. That last visit, he would die there on the cross and yes, uh, give his life for the sins of the world. In Matthew chapter 9, verse 35, we read, that yes. Jesus went about. We've got to go about. Jesus went about all the cities and villages, teaching in their synagogues and preaching the gospel of the kingdom and healing every sickness and every disease among the people. He went about, verse 36, but when he saw, my second point again, when he saw the multitudes, he was moved with compassion on them because they fainted and were scattered abroad by his sheep but having no shepherd. He went about. He saw the needs of the people. It caused a, a feeling of compassion in his heart. And what did he do? He uh, went about ministering to them and, and healing them. When Jesus Christ organized his, uh, uh, his church, what I just read was in the ninth chapter of Matthew, but in the tenth chapter is he's commissioning his church. He said, heal the sick, cleanse the leper, raise the dead, cast out devils. Freely ye have received, freely give. Jesus Christ wants his church to have the same heart of compassion uh, for the suffering needs of people that he had uh, to go out among the people. Uh, uh, we've got to get among them and see their needs and uh, feel their hurt, feel their pain, and then minister to that just like he did. Amen. Matthew chapter 15, verse 32. Then Jesus called his disciples unto him and said, I have compassion on the multitude because they continue with me. With me. That contact again among the people. They continue with me now three days and have nothing to eat. I will not send them away fast. As we get in among the people, among the community, then we become aware of the needs. And let me tell you, thank God when we have a, a guest to come and visit our service. Thank God for, uh, for, for first timers. People need to go to church. Yes. But there's just as great a need for the church to go to the people. Amen. That's what Jesus did, and that's what he wants us to do. Yes, How many have we sent away hungry? Yes, 
How many have we seen of various kinds of needs that have not tried to minister to those needs? But Jesus said, I will not send them away fasting lest they faint in the way. And then he fed the multitude. With seven loaves and some fishes uh, on, on this occasion. Fed 4,000 people. On another occasion of 5,000. Matthew chapter 20, verse uh, 30. And behold, two blind men sitting by the wayside, when they heard that Jesus passed by. If he had not passed by, if he had not went to where they were, if, uh, if his presence had not come among them, we would not read of the glorious things but that took place here and the manifestation of the power of God and the uh, needs of people being met. And the same is true of his body today. When they heard that Jesus passed by, Oh God, let the world hear that the church of God is passing by. Not, not passing by. Like in the parable of the Good Samaritan, like the, the priest and, 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 and the Levite. But when we pass by, we're on a mission. Hallelujah. We're on a, a, a one old slogan said, find a need and fill it. Find a hurt and heal it. In that sense, we are the pass by. Jesus uh, passed by. And these blind men cried out, saying, Have mercy on us, O Lord, thou Son of David. Verse 34, So Jesus had compassion on them and touched. Are we touching people? Surely we're seeing needs and we'll see a whole lot more needs and the, the, the more uh, uh, that uh, we go about. But when we do, are we just going to send, send them away with their needs unmet? Jesus had compassion on them and touched their eyes and immediately their eyes received sight and they followed him. Mark chapter 1 verse 38. And he said, let us go. Again, the first step. Let us go into the next towns that I may preach there also. For therefore came I forth. And there came a leper to him. Verse 40. Verse 41. And Jesus moved with compassion, put forth his hand and touched him and said unto him, I will be thy clean. Now, leprosy was a very contagious disease. And most of you uh, uh, know uh, uh, some about that in, in Bible times. How the, how the leopards would have to cry out, unclean, unclean, lest someone should come too close to them and thereby uh, contract their deadly disease. But Jesus was not afraid of leprosy rubbing off on him. But rather, he knew that of what he had could rub off on the leper. Amen. May it be true of the body of Christ today that we'll not be afraid but less of what they have will rub off on us. Uh, if we'll get close to them, if we'll get out and get among them uh, right where they're hurting, how come what we have cannot rub off on them? Hallelujah. I tell you, that power in Jesus' name was greater than the power of leprosy. And the power that we have in His name today is greater than any evil force uh, that is out there. It was said concerning the ministry of John the Baptist and uh, of Jesus, the kingdom of God is at hand. It was just as close to them as their hand was. Why? Because the king had come. 
Even if it was as it was said when Jesus was here on earth, the kingdom of God is at hand. May it be said of his body today, the church of God is at hand. Making contact that it's went out, it's come near. Not because of a fear of leprosy. That instead of being at hand and touching the leper with a hand, let it not be said that the church of God is at arm's length. Not at arm's length, but at hand. Hallelujah. Well, I'll save some of this uh, for, for Southside. I'll paraphrase something you're very familiar with. The parable of the Good Samaritan about the man that went down from Jerusalem to Jericho and fell among thieves. Stripped of his clothes, wounded, left half dead. And there come along a priest and when he saw him, he passed by on the other side. Likewise, a Levite came and looked on him and passed by on the other side. But a certain Samaritan, as he came where he was. That's the first step. As he came where he was. And when he saw him. He had compassion on him and went to him and bound up his wounds, pouring in oil and wine and sitting on his own beast and brought him to an end and took care of him. The apostle of love, John, 1 John 3, 17, said, But whoso hath this world's goods and seeth his brother have need, and shutteth up his bowels of compassion from him. How dwelleth the love of God in him? My little children, let us not love in word, neither in tongue, but in deed and in truth. God has given us a two feet to go. He's given us two eyes to see. He's given us two hands to give and to minister to others. And he's given us one man. Let us not love in word, neither in tongues, but in deed and a, a truth. Wish I had, well, I'm going to read this, Philippians chapter 2. Verse 1. If there be therefore any consolation in Christ, if any comfort of love, if any fellowship of the Spirit, if any bowels, and in the Greek, that's the same word that's usually translated as com compassion. If there be any bowels and mercies, verse 5 said, Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, of whom I've shared uh, uh, just a few examples of his compassion, who being in the form of God thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation and took upon him the form of a servant, and was made in the likeness of men, and being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself, and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. Now I guess, I don't know if anybody's thinking, well your, your time's about gone, what happened to that queen? At his right hand. Here it is, Matthew chapter 25. And this is a part of the expected end of the church of God. What I'm fixing to read to you, I believe there's a prophetic sense to it that speaks of one aspect of the perfection of the church of God that we have not yet seen in its fullness. But if we wind up on his right hand, which we will. We will fulfill this. 
Matthew 25 and 31. When the Son of Man shall come in glory. Verse 34. Then shall the king say unto them, On his right hand. Remember, the queen's going to be on his right hand. Come, ye blessed of my father. Inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation uh, of uh, the world. Oh, my, my, my. Fear not, little flock. Who is that? The church of God. It is the Father's good pleasure to give you the church of God, to give you the kingdom. He said, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. There is a sense in which this can apply to the church inherited the kingdom. For I was a hunger and you gave me meat. I was thirsty and you gave me drink. I was a stranger and you took me in naked and you clothed me. I was sick and you visited me. I was in prison and you came unto me. Amen, Brother Rick. Amen. Verse 40. Inasmuch as you have done it unto one of the least of these, my brethren, ye have done it unto me. Then shall he say also to them on the left hand, Depart from me, ye cursed, into everlasting fire, prepare for the devil and his angels. Verse 45, he said, Inasmuch as ye did it not to one of the least of these, ye did it not to me. And these shall go away into everlasting punishment, but the righteous into life eternal. Yes, I, I believe in the uh, uh, prophetic order of events that there will be a judgment of nations according to the way that they treated Israel and without a doubt this has some reference to that but there are eternal principles that have to do with the nature of God himself amen and those who do not feed the poor and clothe the naked and visit those in prison. What did Jesus say? Amen. The church is going to be on his right hand. Amen. The queen on his right hand. God help us to be a people of compassion. God bless you. Amen. Thank you, Lord.